Hi, my name is David, and our hope for today comes out of 2 Corinthians 13, 5 to 10. Examine yourselves and see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we, we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is that you may be fully restored. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority, the authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. At the end of every semester, at the end of every course, there's some sort of final, right? A final project sometimes, but often a final exam. Our college students have wrapped up recently, schools ended uh, either this last week or this week, and many people have taken a final exam. A final exam is a test of knowledge, a test of the months of learning. Have the lectures and the assignments and the reading, have they stuck? Have you completed the learning outcomes for the modules of that course? And at the end of our lives, we too will face an ultimate judgment from God, right? How have we known him? Have we lived in light of the words of Jesus? In Matthew 25, 31 to 43, Jesus talks about this final testing we will experience from God. It says, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd sh separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and I was in prison and you did not look after me. So what does this verse have to do with Paul in 2 Corinthians? Paul calls us in verse 5 to test ourselves, to examine ourselves. We might think of this as a practice exam, right? To test ourselves before a final, to make sure we know what we think we know and to find what areas where we are lacking and need to improvement. Right? In our own lives, we get to do this sort of self-assessment. Right? As Paul says, test yourself to see Jesus inside of you. And this has really been what so much of Paul's letter has been. It's been a reminder to look to Jesus as the primary voice in the church and a reminder of how we as Christians should characterize ourselves, of how we should act and how we should live. It's a metric for our practice test, a measure we can use to evaluate ourselves and see that we are living with the hope of Jesus inside of us. Test yourself and see that Jesus is living inside of you. What a powerful idea and what a great hope we have as our foundation.